Hello, Kit Crown here, your mortgage consultant for life. Welcome to this week's Mortgage Moments video. I spoke with one of my past clients who, on occasion, calls to get insights on mortgages or to get my input on a property he's thinking about purchasing as an investment. He's a really nice guy, and I'm grateful for his enduring trust. He is also the father to twin daughters, both of whom are married to veterans and both of whom are in the market to buy their first home. I think it's interesting that his daughters are living parallel lives, especially since they live in different states. My client is one of those parents who I really, really admire, both for his nurturing and for his restraint. He is determined to let his daughters find their own paths into adulthood, and he's willing to let them fall down and scrape their knees along their journey. That's essential to learning how to survive. Even so, he's investing in their success by introducing them to some of the topics that they should be thinking about when it comes to buying and financing a new home. That's brilliant. I'm telling you this because he called me earlier this week looking for clarification on the financing options and the costs that he was hearing from his daughters. It seemed as if each of them were getting completely different guidance, even though they were both seeking the same VA financing. How could that be, he asked. Are there different versions of a VA mortgage? There's the rub and the topic for today. How do you know who to trust, what information sources to trust, and where to start learning the essentials when you're getting ready to buy and finance a home? Let me start by saying that I think we could all agree that turning to the internet is dangerous, that there's so much misinformation out there that it's simply not the place to go when you're looking for irrefutably correct guidance. That makes the fact that you're watching this video via the internet clearly a little dubious, but we're gonna let that one pass. So here's my unscientific and decidedly unproven method when I need to find an expert to help me. First, I ask someone knowledgeable and worthy of my trust who they would use and why. That's a great starting point that will give you a name or two to start with. Next, I look to see if there are any professional or business organizations who have some sort of groomed list of approved or qualified members. Hopefully, you'll see the names of the people who've been recommended on those lists. From there, I start looking at reviews to seeing what's be, being said about these people. There's that old adage, you can fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. And no, Abraham Lincoln wasn't the author of that quote. Online reviews are a terrific way to gain a sense of someone's credibility and ability to deliver on their promises. Last, I pick up the phone and I talk to people. You'd be amazed how well your spidey sense works in separating out the charlatans from the true masters. My client did his due diligence years ago and I'm grateful I made the cut. I hope to be part of his circle for as long as he has mortgage questions that I can help with. We all need someone we can lean on as the song goes from time to time. And your takeaway from this week's video is that finding true experts, the best of the best, doesn't have to be hard. That a little effort can bring a lifetime of benefits. And just for this one time, I want you to trust what you're learning on the internet. Just this once. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. And remember always that I'm here every day to help solve the problems that living life on life's terms sends your way. Keep my number close by so you can reach me anytime you need my help or anytime someone you care about needs someone who will care about them as much as I care about you. See you next week.